Hello everyone, uh, this is Rinkun from RSVP. This video is a bit of a departure from the average video making subject of the channel. This does have to do with Roblox and this does have to do with video, but this is a bit of an experiment that has very limited applications in the field of video making, at least in Roblox. Now, one of the things I lamented about uh, Roblox's game engine is the fact that there is a natural limit as far as how big or how low your FOB is. In my opinion, I feel like it's a bit limited. So I was thinking, I wonder if there's a way to overcome this issue. I realize, oh, wait, perhaps I can make use of viewport frames. And for those who don't understand what a viewport frame is, it is a UI element in Roblox where anything that is parented to it uh, renders itself as its own screen. So my plan here was, okay, maybe I can perform a complete 360 view by having a camera and then having a FOV of 120 and slightly rotated by 120 degrees. You multiply that three times and you put them together. You can theoretically make a 360 degree camera. And what that would look like is something like this. This is a 360 degree camera. Um, you can tell because you can see this blue building on the side here is showing up on the other side. So everything here is connected. What this does is it, it splits the screen into three sections. Well, technically four sections, but the principle is that I rotate 120 degrees and then stitch together. Now, while this looks fine, I think uh, there was kind of an obvious issue that is going on here, which is that at the borders of the viewport frames, you notice that there's a bend where there is supposed to be a straight surface. And the reason is the camera's associated with the viewport frame is rotated at a certain degree. It sort of doesn't smoothly um, interpolate between uh, two viewport frames. So at the end, you have this like weird angle where it shouldn't exist. And it gets more extreme when you look down or look up. And you can notice that this massive bend, like such as this uh, building here in between these um, viewport frames. The solution to this is actually this code. I have a value called N, which is the number of viewport frames you know, that would render this image. What you can do is increase this value and pump it up to something like 10. You'll notice that all the straight lines do become a little bit more curvier. And you can increase the number of N to maybe any amount, but keep in mind the more Ns that you increase because it increases the number of viewport frames and for every viewport frame it needs to make a copy of the set. It will actually make your rendering a lot more slower. And viewport frame rendering is pretty expensive, so you need to be thinking this a little bit more highly. Not to mention, the more Ns that you have, the effects diminish. For example, if you increase like N from 3 to 4, you notice, you know, it gets a lot better, but at a certain point, if you go from like, let's say 30 to 31, it's, it's barely noticeable. This is a 360 panorama, but you're not limited to just 360. You can just, you know, go back to 180 degrees and it'll render it with a 180 degrees uh, uh, FOV. Let's try to bump up the FOV from 360 to 720. Oh no. The reason why this happens is if you go to your screen UI, it's going to say that the camera is maxing up at 120 degrees FOV. And unfortunately, it can't increase the horizontal field of view anymore. So it's the best that they can do here. So in this situation, you actually have to reduce the height of the screen to make it fill in better. And the same goes for very high numbers of N. Uh, keep in mind, if you increase the FOV, it doesn't actually increase the number of viewport frames. So you can basically increase this FOV anymore. It, the problem is that it's not performance, it's just rendering. If the number of FOV divided by N goes up higher than 120, there's a bunch of discontinuities. You're just going to have to have a very, very wide screen to pull this off. Before I leave off, I want to briefly explain how to use the plugin. Now, the plugin does not use any UIs. What it does have is a module that is available in the global functions, which is underscore g.pano, which is a module script which contains all the functions necessary to run this panorama. If you want to start off, I recommend copy and pasting this code. Just simply select the object that you want to include in the panorama rendering. And if you run it, your panorama effect will activate immediately. Now, let me briefly explain this code. Underscore G dot pano dot N is set to 20, and that is the number of horizontal viewport frames that is in the panorama. Underscore G dot pano dot FOV is the size of the field of view in degrees. 
underscore g dot pano dot world is the models that you want to render in your panorama. Game selection get allows you to render anything that you have selected in the explorer to be rendered in the panorama. Underscore g dot pano dot set will set up the panorama a screen GUI. If you don't have this code, code will not run because you did not set up the actual viewport frames. Underscore G dot panel dot run will make it so it will update the viewport frames in time with the movement of the camera. If you only want to do this once, simply do underscore G dot pano dot render. And this will only render the panorama once without updating a relative to the camera. I hope you like this and I hope this is um, interesting and very uh, creative looking and uh, Thanks for watching. This is RSVP. Uh, we release a bunch of uh, resources, tutorials. If you guys want to um, follow along with that, uh, join the server in the description. Thank you for watching.